Okay, um, we're going to just talk about here um, personalizing the theme on a template. So we've made a decision that we're going to create our portfolio using a bootstrap template, let's say, or any template. And so now we know that we want to do some personalization because they, we don't want it to look like everybody else that used the template. And so let's say I've come in, I've Googled Bootstrap for Portfolio. Um, I pull up this page. I like, oh, I really like this template. Um, so I've downloaded it and um, now I've got it in my Visual Studio code. And if I run it, uh, it looks like this, just like the template. And you know, I kind of like this template. It's got these little pop-ups. I've checked that they look okay um, in the phone. It's a single page app. I kind of like that. So everything looks good, but you know, I don't really like obviously the picture I want to change. I want to change the background color. You know, and I just basically want to get some control over this and that's going to be mostly CSS and image changes. I'm going to need to put the images of my um, work in here. And, you know, just generally I want to get a little bit more control over this. So this video will show you just a little bit about that and how to go about uh, personalizing this. So the first thing that you look at when you've got something like this, and you know what, if you went to work in a company and they gave you a, a project to add a feature and you were going to go in with CSS, this is the kind of analysis that you'd want to do to figure out where you should do your coding. Because you can see they've linked in a whole bunch of stuff. Some of it will look familiar and some won't. First of all, we want to be on Bootstrap 4, and, and so um, we are. Um, here because we've we picked up this BlackRock Digital and they're using Bootstrap 4. But let's look at where this is. We can verify that. So vendor bootstrap CSS. So we're going to look inside this vendor bootstrap CSS. And you can see these are these are a combination of minified and non-minified files. So some of them are not minified, so you can read them. Others are minified, not going to be able to read them. Everything that gets linked into this index is going to be minified because we're always striving for our production work to be as small as possible. But we can look at, if we see a file here, we should be able to look at the non-minified file. So here's our bootstrap min CSS, and here's the bootstrap CSS. So this is the entire CSS file for bootstrap located under Bender. So we can have a look at that. and. Um, see how that where that comes from. So there's a minified file and a non-minified file for each file listed under this vendor bootstrap CSS. Then we see we have a font awesome, we have their minified file. So we have access to all of those nice font awesome icons if we want to use them. We're using Montserrat from Google Fonts and Lotto. So if we wanted to change our fonts, this is where we would change them. And so you would just go out to, to um, Google Fonts and get the links to the fonts that you wanted to use. So changing typography is not so bad, although you might want to identify like which font is being used where. So if you go into your, um, into your inspector here, uh, you should be able to figure out the font being used on that start bootstrap. Let's see. Sometimes I just go into computed, good font family, and you can see Montserrat is being used there. So if I wanted to replace that, and then in my code, I would put the proper font for Montserrat. And you don't want to get more than two fonts, probably, because it'll just start looking like, I don't know, like a kidnap note, you know, where someone's pasted together a bunch of fonts out of a magazine. So you don't want to do that. You know, you want to, you know, keep your fonts and you want to have them kind of match. And then you've got this magnific pop-up CSS, and that's what's controlling this. You really don't want to mess with that because they're going to be doing a lot of um, things to show, hide, you know, change dimensions. So just don't even mess with that. It's under vendor. Then you have the freelancer min under CSS. So if you look up there, you can see we've got the minified and the non-minified version. And freelancer min is going to be containing things that that modify 
on top of Bootstrap. And of course, you know, following the cascading style sheet model, you always want the last thing in the list to be the one that you really want applied. And if you notice in here, I think you're going to see the use of important a lot, bang important, because that's what you need to override Bootstrap. So if you're not actually changing Bootstrap, which you probably don't want to do, um, I'll look briefly at what that would involve. But um, normally, you're if you're just trying to uh, you know personalize a portfolio uh, template, you want to do something like freelance or CSS and just try to override. First you try it without the bank, because generally this is not a good thing to see a lot of this in CSS, but if you're just doing it for a template, I guess it's okay. Now I wouldn't put my own code into Freelancer and you're not gonna get rid of Freelancer. You're gonna actually want to add your own file, but put it after Freelancer. So we will go into CSS. Well, let's, let's take a minute and just see what we might want to do before we start adding a file. So I think the first thing that I would look at would be I'd want to change that background color. And um, you can see here that um, we have a couple of classes that are dictating what is happening in this header. Okay, so the nav is that section up there and then we've got this header and there's a BG primary text white text center masthead. So I'm going to just go look in computed to see who's doing background color. And it's coming from freelancer min. Well, if I look at that, it's not going to tell me much because it's just that big blob. But I do have freelancer CSS. So I can go back and have a look at that. Um, so this background color, let's go see freelancer min who's doing that. And, you know, I can also kind of play around before I even start changing things by just changing the background color here. So let's say background color, um, let's say I'm going to just go red. And then I'm going to have to do an important because I'm overwriting a whole bunch of different background colors. So yeah, I think, oh, well, that's exciting. Or I might try, you know, goldenrod. Let's see, goldenrod. And I, again, it won't work without an important after it. So you can kind of play around in here before you actually start committing your code into a file. And then, um, so let's take a look at that. So how am I, if I do, when I find a color I finally like, I'm going to want to add it, link it into this. So I'm going to go to the CSS and I'm going to create a new file, call it whatever you want, style.css. And I'm going to want to link it in. And of course, it's going to be at the very end because it's, it's using important. It needs to be the last thing that the browser interprets in order to get the right precedence. So CSS and style. Oops, CSS, style, CSS, and rel equals style sheet. Okay, so that gets me linked. Now I have the file ready to be accessed. And now I can come in and I identified in the computed that the background color. Oh, I didn't really figure out exactly what style I'm of. Oh, here it is. I'm overwriting BG primary. But let's go take a look at freelancer CSS and just see what that looks like. So BG primary. Yeah, so BG primary is a single, as a class with a single function, it's setting a background color. So if I'm going to override that class, all I need to do is adjust background color. So BG primary, and I guess I like goldenrod better. So I'll take background color goldenrod. Okay, maybe light goldenrod, maybe. Well, actually, if you start messing with contrast, you might have to change the color of the text too. And that's all good. So just you'll just have to work with it. Let's just stick with goldenrod. And oh, we're going to need our important to get the override in there. All right, so there we go. I've got a background color. And then another thing I might want to do is like, this doesn't really look like me. and. 
Um, so I might want to like go in and find out where that's set up. Okay, so there is, it's coming from image profile PNG. So what I might want to do, and I don't have anything set up to do this right now, but is I might want to create my own profile PNG or a totally new file with my picture. Um, you can try to cut a circle out or you can just stick a square in there and use border radius to make it a circle if you want. I mean, at this point, you can play around with the HTML. So you're like in here image profile so you're in this code you can use your html skills you can to um to change that image should add an alt you know we always should for accessibility add an alt value there um, and basically you can change any of the content in here and then of course you'd be coming in here with your own um pictures so instead of you know, the picture of the cake or the circus, this would probably be a, a snapshot of one of your projects. So um, I hope that helps. Now, if you did want to like really get into to understanding how these minified CSS works, we can do that. It would be a separate kind of lesson, but basically what's happening is it's using SAS, and this is a good skill to kind of become familiar with. And, um, Basically, SAS is kind of a, a, it does some kind of shorthand for CSS and allows you to create multiple files so you can nicely arrange your, your CSS by, say, functionality. So like all the footer SAS, it looks a lot like CSS. Sometimes it looks exactly like CSS, but it allows some nesting that you can't do in CSS. But once you've got all of those defined, you import them into this file, and then you run a, you run a, a script. The, here we have a gulp script. So this is a JavaScript task runner that um, will actually go through, grab all your SAS files, and generate the vendor output. So it takes care of turning all of that SAS into both CSS and um, into CSS and minified CSS. So if you're interested in doing that, um, talk to me, we can do that. You can see that they use variables, so all of these are the colors that, by, that come in by default um, are provided in a variable place, um, so you don't have to do overrides and things like that. So if you were interested in this, we could look into that as part of your project, but as far as getting your, see, getting your portfolio assignment done, you probably just want to work with adding your own style sheet and doing some um, personalization of the theme in there. All right, hope that helps.